Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the history of Sony Pictures Television all the way from 1987 when it was still part of the Coca-Cola company. I'd just like to say a little bit about the legend I'm going to be using. Anything with a black border is a distinct corporate entity. In most cases, that'll end with ink or something like that. Anything with a green border is a legally recognized name used by a particular company, or maybe more than one company. And then anything with a pink border is either a division within the corporation that people would refer to inside but never outside, or a brand name used that isn't a legally recognized fictitious name. And then the blue writing is just the line of business that a particular company is involved in. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get to the rest of the video. First of all, in 1987, the Coca-Cola company decided to reorganize all its television operations into a new group named Coca-Cola Television Operations. This group comprised two production companies, which were Merv Griffin Enterprises and Columbia Pictures Television. A new distribution company, Coca-Cola Telecommunications. And a production and distribution company, Embassy Communications. Merv Griffin Enterprises actually consisted of two distinct companies, Caliphone Productions in charge of Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy Productions in charge of Jeopardy. There was another production company under CPT called Rostar Television or Rostar Productions. In late 1987, this group was made a part of the newly formed Columbia Pictures Entertainment in which Coke held a 49% stake. On January 4th, 1988, Coca-Cola Television was again reorganized. The group was reincorporated under the Columbia Pictures Television name. <laughs> Embassy Communications became ELP Communications, standing for Embassy Limited Partnership. It, along with the old CPT Holdings entity, continued as distinct entities, but operated as part of the singular Columbia studio. Coca-Cola Telecommunications was folded in as the distribution of the new company, known as Columbia Pictures Television Distribution. <laughs> It was also around this time that Columbia formed its own international production and distribution arm, Columbia Pictures International Television. This was not a distinct entity, but operated out of the regional offices of other internationally operating Columbia divisions, hence the green outline. Merv Griffin Enterprises continued as it was before, retaining the Coke byline on, on its logo until February 8th for some reason. In 1989, Sony Corporation of America acquired Columbia Pictures Entertainment. Straight after that, they acquired Goober Peters Television Inc., or the Goober Peters Entertainment Company, formerly Barris Industries. It became a subsidiary of Columbia Pictures Television. This also had two divisions, Goober Peters Program Sales and Goober Peters Advertising Sales, and was mostly involved in producing game shows. Sony also saw fit to reanimate the CPT logo using footage from the 1981 movie logo. About a year later, in November 1990, Goober Peters' program and advertising sales were folded into Columbia Pictures Television Distribution. Its production operations continued in a limited fashion until December. In late 1991, a few things happened. Columbia Pictures Entertainment was renamed to Sony Pictures Entertainment and in keeping with this, its television operations were reorganized under a new group called Sony Television Entertainment. This was an internal corporate division though its name was never used on screen. The hyphen was also dropped from the name of TriStar Pictures and a new television studio was founded with that name built from assets that Sony acquired from New World Television. This, along with Merv Griffin Enterprises, started operating under the umbrella of Sony Television Entertainment with a high degree of autonomy. John Feldheimer ran the new studio, continuing his role from New World Television. In December, the Goober Peters Entertainment Company produced one last TV movie, Christmas on Division Street, then was folded into Columbia Pictures Television. In 1992, the byline, a Sony Pictures Entertainment Company, was added to all three studios' logos. In the case of Columbia, and TriStar,
This also meant the unveiling of totally new logos, which were painted by Michael Diaz and Alan Raingold, respectively. In 1993, another logo was painted by Michael Diaz for Sony, this time for Merv Griffin Enterprises, the Columbia, and TriStar logos also got new music. More reorganization happened in 1994. On February 21st, all the three production studios were brought under the umbrella of a new division, Columbia TriStar Television, again run by John Feltheimer. They still operated as very much separate studios, but management became more consolidated. At the same time, Columbia Pictures Television Distribution began to be referred to internally as Columbia TriStar Television Distribution, but the old name continued to be used legally and on screen for the time being. In July, the Merv Griffin Enterprises brand was retired, with Califon and Jeopardy running directly under the new division. As such, the division, Columbia TriStar Television, needed a logo, so one was introduced shortly after. 1995 saw more changes. John Feltheimer was promoted to head of Sony Television Entertainment, which ceased to exist shortly after. Sony's television operations were reorganized as the Columbia TriStar Television Group. As part of this change, Columbia Pictures International Television became Columbia TriStar International Television and started using its name on screen for the first time in a new animated logo. The production studios continued operating the same way, albeit with a reduced degree of separation from the distribution company. It was also around this time that an alternate, more majestic jingle was introduced for TriStar Television. On July 12, 1996, the production studios were further consolidated, now operating under the auspices of a new centralized production company, Columbia TriStar Television Inc. ELP and CPT now operated directly under this company and name instead of Columbia Pictures Television. While this is hard to represent in the diagram due to the nitty gritty of the corporate structure, Columbia Pictures Television was actually a sub studio of this new unit. At the same time, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution finally became the legal and on screen name used for the distribution company. It was also around this time that this legal name began to be used in copyright notices on syndicated and cable programming. As well as that, the Columbia TriStar Television Group started an animation unit, Adelaide Productions, which operated autonomously but used the Columbia TriStar Television name and logo. The cartoons produced by the studio used the two logos interchangeably. A strange thing happened in 1998. All of the group's production operations were merged into a partnership between Sony Pictures and Global Maritime Group, which was a cruise line company. This company was called Global Entertainment Productions GmbH and Company Median KG, and, as you can tell, operated out of Germany for some reason. The studio seemed to have continued operating with the same degree of autonomy, but for legal and copyright purposes, all the work was done by this new company, at least for the 1998 to 1999 season. The strangest part, though, is that this was completely reversed in 1999. It went back to the old way. There were two differences, though. ELP Communications ceased all production operations because Beekman's World was finished, and TriStar Television was shut down. However, because the copyright and early edition was co-owned by TriStar and CBS, the TriStar Television Corporation remained open just for the sake of not having to change the ownership of the show. The actual production was done by Columbia TriStar Television, but seemingly to save on paperwork, TriStar Television remained the copyright holder in name only until the show was cancelled the next year. In this year, Columbia TriStar Television finally stopped using the first logo for anything, sticking to an enhanced version of the animated one. Ross Star also finished up in the year 2000 with one last TV movie, Alley Cat Strike. Columbia TriStar Television Inc. began to be referred to as Columbia TriStar Network Television, at this stage producing shows only for traditional broadcast networks, except Califon and Jeopardy, which produced for syndication via King World Productions. 
On the 1st of January 2001, the Columbia Pictures Television Studio was shut down and folded into Columbia TriStar Network Television. At this stage, this was a singular division with unified management, but it encompassed some operations of both Columbia Pictures Television Inc. and Columbia TriStar Television Inc. You may remember what I said earlier about early edition being co-owned by TriStar Television and CBS. Well, Sony reckoned that this was becoming a trend. Since the financial interest in syndication, or FinCEN, laws were repealed by the FCC in the early 90s, networks seemed to want more and more to own a share of their programming so that they could make a bundle on syndication. This was bad news for Columbia TriStar Network Television, as the bulk of its revenues came from syndication via Columbia TriStar Television Distribution. At this point, all the other major Hollywood studios had either acquired or set up their own network, but this path was blocked to Sony thanks to its Japanese ownership. Thus, a decision had to be made in relation to the seemingly loss-making future of Columbia TriStar Network Television. Thus, on October 25th, this doomed division was shut down. At the same time, Columbia TriStar Television Distribution was renamed to Columbia TriStar Domestic Television, but as you can see, the old legal name was still used for copyright purposes on some shows. This newly renamed division took over production of all the old network shows. In the case of The King of Queens, Columbia TriStar Television Inc. remained as an in-name only production company because, as with TriStar and Early Edition, the show was co-owned by CBS. The group was streamlined, with all operations being moved under Columbia TriStar Domestic Television, including Columbia TriStar International Television. As well as that, the logo types were unified, with the same animation and imagery being used on the domestic and international logos. The newly renamed division also expressed hopes to work with the next generation broadband technology. This whole next generation and innovation idea inspired another change in late 2002. Columbia Pictures Television was reincorporated as Sony Pictures Television, resulting in the first on-screen use of the Sony Pictures Bars logo. <laughs> Columbia TriStar International Television was also renamed to Sony Pictures Television International. <laughs> As you can see, the Columbia TriStar domestic television name and logo were still used by Sony on some shows for a while, along with the in-name only Columbia TriStar television distribution. In 2003, the loose ends in Sony Pictures Television's corporate structure were mostly tied up, so now it was bars all the way in terms of logos, with a new animation being introduced for Sony Pictures Television International. In 2004, the in-name only Columbia TriStar Domestic Television was shut down, so Sony Pictures Television Inc. operated only under its corporate name from then on. In 2007, The King of Queens ended, and so therefore did Columbia TriStar Television's role as a production company. Finally, in 2009, Sony Pictures Television International was shut down and folded into Sony Pictures Television. This was done citing reasons of entertainment being globalized, no doubt due to the influence of the World Wide Web and such. So, that's about it.